Coming up, we have stories about high school girlfriends, not mine, divorcing a pregnant wife, stolen turkeys, stolen toys, and OMG, another theft, stolen cheese, dog names, and a memorial service for your ex-wife's ex-husband. It's like a grab bag of randomness that is going to be all kinds of good drama going on here. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Exposing My Abusive Ex-Girlfriend to Her Fiancé? Oh, damn. Throwaway account, I-26 male, dated my ex-girlfriend in high school when we were both 16. I had a crush on her since second grade, so when she finally agreed to go out with me in high school, I was over the moon. Unfortunately, our relationship was a nightmare. I quickly realized she had low self-esteem, constantly asked for reassurance from me about her looks and weight, and if I didn't tell her what she wanted to hear, she would gaslight and manipulate me to make me feel guilty. I didn't realize it at the time, but after reading stuff online and listening to some podcasts, I realized her behavior was emotionally abusive. We dated for around one year, and she ended up breaking up with me, citing her mental health, etc. I never saw her after high school because we moved to different cities, and also her social media accounts were set to private. Recently, there was a high school reunion. I found out she would be there, so I decided to go. If it's a high school reunion, help me out here. Do they only do that at like 10, 20, like 10 year intervals, or do they do it at five as well? I'm trying to figure out how, how long after high school this has been. She hadn't changed much, was still overweight. She said hi to me as if nothing had happened and proceeded to make small talk with me. It really bothered me that she was pretending nothing happened between us, so I asked if we could talk privately. I told her how I felt about the way that she treated me and was abusive towards me when we were dating. She said something like she was going through a tough time with her self-confidence and apologized for taking it out on me, etc. She said ever since she met her current partner, she was feeling more confident about herself. She then told me that they were engaged, which also came as a shock to me. I asked her if she had told him about us and how she treated me when we were dating. She said she mentioned her past relationships to him, but didn't share all the details. I told her that she needs to tell him about how she was abusive to me so that he knows who he is marrying. At this point, she made up some excuse and ran away from the conversation. I felt that the new partner should know what he's getting into. She is still overweight and has not made any effort to change or improve herself and probably has the same insecurities, and I imagine how this man will have a terrible marriage. So after the party, I used a friend's account to find her fiancé, and I sent him a message detailing the things that she did when we were dating in high school. He responded with something like asking me to stop bothering them. It's been about a week since I did this, and now I am getting bombarded with messages from high school friends calling me a creep and an asshole. I don't understand how people can side with her when she was the one being abusive, and it is her responsibility to let her fiancé know about this, and I was doing what I felt was the right thing. I thought maybe they are reacting this way because they haven't heard the full story and the background about our relationship, so I wanted to post here. Am I the astronaut, or am I helping this poor man? Let me read the edit first. Uh, we, We have some thoughts here. We have some thoughts. Edit. Okay. I was expecting my perspective would be divisive, but didn't realize people would think it's that bad. Reading through all your comments is making me question myself. First of all, I don't have a problem with her weight. I think she's cute. It may be true that I am hung up on her. She was my first and only long-term girlfriend. And no, I'm not an Andrew Tate fan. I just saw some videos of him and thought they were interesting. Oh, I don't know much about him. I do think I deserved more from her than an apology. And I did always think that we would end up together once she worked on herself. I feel very frustrated about how things turned out. I am against therapy, so I won't do that. I might contact her again to see if she will talk to me. Maybe that will bring more closure. Even though it is mostly negative, I still appreciate the comments. Speaking of comments, top comments. So, you corner someone you dated years ago. She listens to you before stopping the conversation because it's going nowhere. Then you harass her fiancé and try to blow up her life. Jealous and bitter much? You repeatedly insult her. Wait, you're reading your post. I don't see evidence of her being abusive. You're the asshole. Big time. You could try to contact her, but I'm pretty sure she's going to have a restraining order uh, here pretty soon. Um, because this is this is the weirdest part about this. And, and Candy Thunder and I actually had a conversation that kind of leans this direction a little bit. It was more about... Um, 
<clears throat> memoirs, right? Memoirs where people are reflecting on their lives and can pretty much say whatever they want about anyone. There's no fact checking there. It's just it's, you know, opinion gets swayed based on what someone remembers from how a thing happened in their past. And this is kind of the same thing. He didn't realize that any of this stuff was going on at the time. It was years later when he was reflecting back on their relationship and thinking, man, she really mistreated me. You know what? I'm pissed off about that. She really mistreated me. I mean, the fact that she needed constant reassurance from him, the fact that she was insecure, that doesn't equal being emotionally abusive. And maybe the other things that he that he had alluded to in here, maybe those lean that way, but they were dating in a high school. What high school girl is not insecure? And also, when you're with someone, everybody has insecurities. Everybody. Me. Did he say that this was his only serious relationship and he hasn't had one since? Let me try to go back and find that. Is her responsibility to let her fiance know about this? No, it's not. No, it is not. It, it, is, it is not anybody's responsibility to, to when they enter a relationship, go through the Rolodex and be like, okay, I dated this person in high school and here's why that didn't work. Uh, oh yeah, in middle school I did this person and this is why this didn't work. I just need to make sure everything's out on the table here. Why he feels like he was so severely wronged and that it's her responsibility to now announce to the world like she's supposed to be in some kind of registry. For being insecure is beyond me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen something like this before. It's alarming. Should have done this a long time ago, but we'll go ahead and go red flag mode here. It, it is alarming. Like insecurities wise, this guy has some massive insecurities. He's got to still be hung up on this gal. She apologized to him. End of story. What kind of closure do you need past an apology that seemed pretty effing sincere? Now you need to make sure that she's miserable too, because you are, and you think that the reason that you are is, is because you were listening to Andrew Tate of all people and coming back through your life to figure out where you had been so wronged and why you're in this place right now. And you figured that that was pretty shitty where you're at now must be her fault. So you got to knock her down to the same level. There are people who rise by lifting others. And there are people who knock other people down to make it seem like they've risen. And you, sir, are one of those people. Misery loves company, right? You don't go back through your life and decide that someone wronged you a long time ago and try to implode their life even after they've apologized to you. You don't do it. This is obsessive. This is an issue. The fact that you are against therapy so you won't do that is truly unfortunate because you got some really deep shit going on that is only going to be unpacked and you're only going to be able to move past in therapy. And until then... You're going to live on this planet right here, a planet we like to call Ascon One, where only the most fucked up of fucked up reside. You'll be joined by several viscerally evil mother-in-laws. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Divorcing My Pregnant Wife Because She Looked Into My Phone? There better be, it better not be that simple. Better not be that simple. My wife started jokingly making snide comments that I was having an affair. I thought she was teasing me, so I mostly ignored her or laughed with her. I didn't know she was actually serious. Then she was getting more irritated and arguments increased. In one argument, I asked her what the problem was and she told me that I was cheating. She started telling me all the time I was late from work or how I was staring at women in the park, etc. I tried to explain everything and resolve her doubts. I even offered her therapy to clear her doubts. Oh, that's a good idea. That's like telling someone to calm down. How about I get you some therapy? Then she started demanding to see my cell phone. I was like, nope, I don't have to do it. I never asked to see her cell phone, by the way. She told me if I have nothing to hide, I should do it. I told her she should trust me and I should not have to give proof of my honesty to her, but she would not let it go. So I unlocked it and told her if she looks into my phone, we are done. I don't, I don't like that. She checked my phone and I just went numb. Of course, she didn't find anything. I never cheated and I don't plan to ever cheat. I told her I will move out and we can figure out the rest. She freaked out and tried to apologize, but there's no going back. 
Now she is blaming it on the pregnancy hormones, saying she was having dreams that I was cheating. I understand that, but she should have trusted me. I don't have to provide proof. It should be implicit. Otherwise, why marry me? If she was having bad thoughts, we could just talk it out and go to therapy. She should not have put me in this position. It's very insulting that my own wife wants proof of my fidelity. That she thinks I'm a kind of person who will cheat on his wife, pregnant wife, on top of that. She called her parents and they called mine and they're trying to make me forgive her. I have made up my mind. She crossed the line. It's over. I just feel sad. I had planned lots of things. I had spent countless hours baby proofing my house. I just wanted a happy family for myself and it's all gone. Lots of telltale signs in that paragraph. Lots of mentions of me and myself and I. Now I have to figure out how to be a single parent. My phone has been buzzing all f- day. I've stopped replying to texts and receiving calls. I do think I have a right to be trusted in my own marriage without having to give proof every step of the way. Edit, I largely work from home. I did not spend lots of time away from her. I have to go to work two days a week. Okay, uh, there's some Candy Thunder thoughts here, but, uh, but let's talk about this for a second. He's taking the innocent until proven guilty route here, but I don't think that's how trust works. Trust is earned. It is not implicit. You don't just get a full meter of trust by getting married. It's not a package deal. You earn that trust. But aside from that, aside from that, the pregnancy hormone side of things, I know can't be blamed for everything. And, and, you know, I, as a dude cannot understand it. There's no way that I can understand it, but I can imagine that it is very, very difficult to to try to to process thoughts and emotions and and all of the variables that aren't aren't there otherwise. If this was out of character for her, in my position, I'd be like, okay, what things would cause some out of character statements or feelings or meanings? Oh, oh, there's a baby inside of her that she's growing that probably has some kind of effect on hormones and uh, and other you know biological. And emotional things. And I, I imagine that I imagine it's a very difficult thing to do and it causes some changes. Aside from all of that, this guy being like, I just wanted a happy family for myself. I baby proofed my home. Now I have to figure out how to be a single parent. There's so much focus on him, 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 Mimi. He's got the Mimi's. Um, There's so much focus on him that he's not thinking about this as a unit. He's not thinking they're obviously not on a team together here. They're they're two individuals, at least for him. He's operating independently from her. And I hand my phone to Candy Thunder all the time. You shouldn't have anything to hide. You shouldn't have anything to worry about. That's that's us. Anytime she needs something from my phone, it's like, yeah, freaking pick it up. Like, your fingerprint stored in there. Like you do, do what you need to do. There shouldn't ever be anything to hide. So why would you worry about it? The fact that he said, if you look, we're done is a huge asshole move. And the fact that he actually followed through with it. And the fact that he thought he should just be implicitly given trust without having to earn it. And the, the fact that he had no compassion for her going through a difficult time right now that I'm sure is difficult. No compassion whatsoever. And it's just like, yeah, told you we're done. All right. Deuces. Now I've got to figure out how to be a single parent. I was wronged. That's an asshole move. <laughs> also, if somebody asked to look at your phone and you unlocked it and put it in front of them and said, okay, if you do it, there's going to be consequences. He baited the hook for the thing that she had already asked for. Obviously, she didn't think he was going to follow through with that, but but she thought that he was cheating because she was having dreams about it because she's growing a baby inside of her. And I'm sure shit's all not normal. Candy Thunder's comment here. Some women go through pregnancy without any issues, but with others, it can completely change you. If this isn't normal behavior for your wife, then you can most likely say that the pregnancy is affecting her ability to think rationally being pregnant can lead to negative thoughts and irrational thinking it did for me and i had to learn how to control them why do you think postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety are so prevalent and concerning if you are willing to leave your pregnant wife because she wanted to look at your phone to calm her irrational fears then you are a huge asshole if you have nothing to hide then it doesn't hurt you but it does help her you being so willing to leave does make it seem like you had one foot out the door already. So maybe your wife wasn't so irrational. You are a huge asshole. I'm not saying that pregnancy is a free pass for anything, but show your wife some grace if this is not her norm. 
And she has had babies. So she can say these things. I don't, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. I don't understand any of it. To, to be so quick to take this action shows just a complete lack of empathy. A complete, and you don't have to be an empath to have to, to provide empathy here. You don't have to, you don't have to understand. You don't have to have gone through pregnancy to be able to understand that things are probably different, that things are probably difficult. You don't have to be an empath. You don't have to be a woman to understand those things and empathize with them. There's this pivot that happens when, when you become a parent and, and maybe, you know, maybe for him, it hasn't hit because, because his child hasn't been born yet. Maybe that's the case, but there's this pivot where at some point, hopefully you realize that you can't be selfish anymore. You don't get to put yourself first anymore. And even though, you know, we, we talk a lot about not staying in, in, unhappy homes because that provides the wrong kind of precedent and benchmark for your children showing them that happiness is possible i believe is always the way even that if that leads to two separate happy homes rather than one unhappy one but for this one incident to just be willing to throw it all away it's just it's it's, he treated her like such a disposable thing while pregnant several problems with that Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, A Guest Stole Our Thanksgiving Turkey, with an update one year later. I'm pretty sure the turkey was no good by then. Going out on a limb. Originally posted November 2022. I'm confused and frustrated and need to vent. We hosted Thanksgiving this year, husband and I, our two kids, husband's siblings and nieces and nephews, and most importantly, husband's gravely ill mother. We're all at peace this Thanksgiving, and Christmas will probably be our last holidays together. It's been emotional and exhausting, but we really wanted to make a memorable day that everyone would enjoy. Our daughter, Mary, is visiting from college, and one day before she flew in, she says her boyfriend, Chris, is actually flying to our city to visit friends over the break. Mary asked if he could come over for Thanksgiving. We've never met Chris before, but to be honest, we're not wild about him. As soon as Mary started dating him, we started seeing worrying changes in her. Our son, who is just a couple of years older, confided in us that Mary is getting into the party scene largely because of Chris. We've tried gently bringing up our concerns with Mary, but she shuts it down and has started to pull away from us. So because we didn't want to alienate her, we said Chris could visit, but they need to stay in separate rooms. She said that won't matter because he's booked a hotel room and she'll be staying there with him the whole weekend. Ah, okay. Cut to Thanksgiving and Mary and Chris arrive. He's not the greatest. He makes a couple of rude slash snide remarks throughout the visit and hits the alcohol way harder than is appropriate. My family was in a very earnest mood, if that makes sense. Lots of emotion. And he was just dismissive and flippant and cast a shadow on everything. At one point, everyone started telling stories about their favorite holidays at mother-in-law's house when she would go all out for parties. My husband and I stopped working in the kitchen to join the conversation. When we go back to the kitchen after maybe half an hour, I went to check the turkey in the oven. It was gone. Completely missing. I asked my husband if he did something with the turkey, and he was just as confused as I was. We looked all over the kitchen and house and couldn't find it. We go out to the living room and ask everyone if they know what happened to the turkey, and no one knows what we're talking about. At this point, I realize Chris isn't around. I pull Mary to the side and ask where he is because I don't want to jump to conclusions and make accusations. She said he had to leave to go meet up with friends. No way. I asked her to text him and ask if he knows what happened to the turkey. And Mary kind of rolls her eyes. At this point, it's dawning on me that Chris probably stole the turkey and left out the back door while we were sharing stories with mother-in-law, but I'm just so confused why anyone would do something like that. I can't bring myself to actually make the accusation out loud. So, we were left in the terrible position of having everything else ready but no turkey. We had to break it to the family that we had no turkey and everyone is confused and sad. Mary said she had to get going to an event with Chris, which deeply disappointed me. I told her as much, and she just said that she'll see us again later this weekend. My in-laws went driving around to restaurants and grocery stores and pieced together enough stuff that we were able to have a meal much later than expected, but it felt like the whole day was ruined. 
Everyone was kind of murmuring about Chris leaving around the time that the turkey disappeared, but no one wanted to actually accuse him out loud because it's such an explosive allegation and there's no actual proof. I'm just confused why anyone would do such a thing and heartbroken because my mother-in-law doesn't deserve this at all. At one point, she teared up but pulled it together. I'm also increasingly angry with my daughter, but I feel like I can't say anything because she'll just pull away even more. This is a ride. Update, I was talking with my son today, and he told me that last night Chris started taunting him over text about the missing turkey. So that settles it. Chris stole the turkey basically is a big F you to all of us. My son didn't say anything at the time because he didn't want to make people more upset than they already were. One of my husband's siblings is very mad at us for how things turned out and how mother-in-law was disrespected. Sibling is not talking with us right now. Like it's their fault. I tried calling and texting Mary, but so far she is ignoring me. That's all I have to say about this. Relevant comments before we get to the update. All else aside, who just leaves Thanksgiving family dinner out the back door? And he 1000% most definitely stole the turkey, which is so effing disrespectful and everyone should have made a huge deal out of it. Daughter needs to understand that it's a fact, not opinion, that she's dating a piece of shit. Comment, bro, this dude stole your turkey and you're scared to say something? First time meeting him and he shows up and steals a turkey. Comment, steals your daughter, steals your turkey. He can't keep getting away with it. She's going to pull away regardless of whether you say anything or not. The difference will be in whether or not she will use your hesitation to confront her behavior and that of her boyfriend to take advantage of you again in the future. I would ask her openly if he took the turkey. They probably promised their friends a Thanksgiving gathering and provided it to them at the expense of your wallet and emotional well-being. Her reaction will tell you everything you need to know about whether they had anything to do with the turkey's fate. Comment. Y'all are too polite for your own good. My family would have fired off, did your scumbag boyfriend steal our effing turkey without a second's hesitation? Literally, the moment it was even suspected. It's possible, right? It's possible. I, you know, I'm guessing it was still pretty hot. Like, did he just take the whole pan and everything with it? Or did he just like wrap it up in like a towel and he's like run out the back door like it's a like it's a 19... 19- 50s cartoon villain would he show up wearing like black and white striped shirt and like and like a a mask and a hat like a knapsack threw it over his shoulder and went and hopped the fence ah got your turkey too you never catch me ah, got your daughter got your turkey ah, live turkey yeah maybe the turkey stole him did you ever think about that also, they're having if if he if he stole it because they would promise some friends that they would provide like a, a Thanksgiving feast. He's showing up with just a turkey. Y'all ever been to uh, a friggin Thanksgiving meal, Christmas meal, anything like that? And there just been like just a turkey, no sides, no nothing, just a turkey, just that. That'd be the most awkward feast ever. I don't understand. Imagine buckling it in the car. I don't. I, yeah, this this is like this should be a new character on the next Home Alone. They've got the uh, the wet bandits, the sticky bandits, the turkey bandits. I don't, dude. I don't know what Mary is thinking right now. There's obviously a big rebellion going on, and I know they haven't been wanting to to press this. My my theory on uh, incognito Rin, they took it to a friend's giving. I, I understand um, that they probably took it to some kind of event, but it's just it's just weird. I, I don't know. And they just steal it. And and this event being even more important than just a normal standard Thanksgiving for them because of mother in law. It just is just shitty. And Mary is not recognizing that or not caring at all because she's in this rebellious phase. And is like, yeah, stick it to the man. Take the turkey. Let's go. Woo! It's crazy. All right, let's dive into the update. Let's do it. What if he returns it a year later? Update November 13th, 2023. One year later. Almost. Hi, everyone. This incident has been on my family's mind this week, and my son encouraged me to write an update. Last year, I hoped to talk with Mary in person about what Chris did, but she blew me off and didn't visit home for the rest of the Thanksgiving weekend. We spoke briefly on the phone a few days later, but she denied that Chris stole our turkey, even though Chris taunted my son about it, basically admitting what he did. Unfortunately, my mother-in-law passed about two weeks after Thanksgiving. The ripple effects were profound. 
Our family expected her to live through Christmas, so it was very difficult to lose what we thought would be her last holiday. And it was even more bitter that the Thanksgiving that was her actual last holiday was ruined by Chris and his incomprehensible theft. From there, it got even worse. Mary flew in for my mother-in-law's funeral and mentioned that Chris might travel with her to see a concert in our city. Ah, uh, hey, sweetheart, uh, I hear you're going to a funeral. Uh, let me just tag along. There's a show I really want to see in town that day. Yeah. Also, uh, you probably need somebody there for like emotional support and stuff. And it won't be me. I'll be at the show. But, you know, we made it clear that he was not welcome in our home or at the funeral. He ultimately stayed at their college. But on the day of the visitation, a bomb threat was made against the funeral home, and we all had to evacuate while the police conducted a search. Are you shitting me? The police were never able to prove it, but I strongly suspect Chris made the threat. My mother-in-law's visitation was cut significantly short, and she was denied a dignified end. Ooh. Some people who wanted to pay their respects ultimately could not because of the evacuation and inspection. One of my husband's siblings has gone no contact with us because they blame my husband and I for ruining the end of my mother-in-law's life by inviting Chris to Thanksgiving last year. Mary refused to take any responsibility for how her relationship with Chris has damaged our family. We, husband and I, and Mary have mutually decided to go no contact. My son has minimal contact with Mary and follows her on social media. Apparently, Mary and Chris are still together. I'm sorry I have such a sad update, but my family and I are very grateful for all the support we received last year. Thank you. No, N no, that's the, that's the update. That's not an update. That's not, that's not an update. It's just more bad shit. Relevant comments. I remember reading your post last year and I was hoping Mary would see that Chris isn't a good guy or that some repercussions would happen. Unfortunately, it just got much worse. I'm so sorry that your family is dealing with someone like Chris. Hopefully Mary will realize that Chris isn't all she thinks he is and can get away from him one day. <sighs> Comment. So does no contact mean financially as well? Original OP's reply. It's complicated. Part of it is there's money in a trust from mother-in-law that Mary is legally entitled to and my husband is the administrator. We also don't want her out on the streets or to abandon her education. That would drag her down even further as a person. Oh, no. So she has this safety net of there's no way they're going to take this shit away from me. And I can just act out in whatever way that I that I want. And Chris is probably just like, oh, you have a trust. And a turkey. Anybody who's willing to call in a bomb threat to a funeral is not just an ASCON one, is not just a brozo, is not just a walking red flag. They are the worst malicious and probably tries to play it off as, as some kind of fun, right? Like who hurt Chris? Who hurt Chris coming up in life that he that he ended up this person that he is. And if this is his idea of a prank, stealing a turkey from mother-in-law's last holiday meal, calling in a bomb threat to mother-in-law's freaking funeral, imagine, Mary, what he's going to do whenever you disagree with him. What's he going to do whenever you won't let him get his way? What lengths will he go to whenever, God forbid, you guys someday have kids and split up and he wants to do like, take them out of country or something. What happens the first time you tell him no? You're getting previews here of the kind of crazy shit that this person will do. And you're still like, yup, it's fun. I'm here for the ride. <sighs> there we go. Indecent <laughs> human being right there. The worst. Chris is the worst. And Mary is just letting him be the worst and inviting the worst into her family like the plague. No. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Banning My Son's Mom from a Memorial? My ex-wife Diana and I have three boys who are 16, 12, and 10. We divorced pretty much after the youngest was born. We also both remarried. She married Christopher and got a divorce last year after seven years of marriage. I'm still happily married to my wife, Jessica. Christopher and my boys were pretty close and they were bummed when the divorce happened. I always got along with the dude. A few months after the divorce, Christopher disclosed 
that the divorce was over his being diagnosed over adenocarcinoma and Diana not wanting to be his nursemaid or responsible for his medical bills. Checks out. Whoa, hold up. So he gets a diagnosis and she's like, Ooh, you're sick. I'm out. Wow. He told me this because he wanted to leave whatever he had to my kids. Unfortunately, he had no family of his own. Obviously, I said, of course, and signed paperwork. A few months ago, I got a call from a social worker saying that Christopher was a few months from dying and unable to care for himself. He gave her my number. Basically, they needed someone to help with end of life. He made me his power of attorney. He was living in a county hospice, and my wife and I moved him into our home because he deserved to live his final days in dignity. It also taught my kids about compassion. Unfortunately, he died after two weeks. He was cremated a few days ago, and me, my wife, my kids, and a few of our friends are planning to spread his ashes at the beach this weekend. Diana asked me if she could attend, and I told her to kick rocks. She wanted nothing to do with him when he was dying. I'm not saying Christopher was a burden, but that's really sad that this dude had to reach out to his ex-wife's first husband like he did. It was clearly more her responsibility. I said she can't sit there and let us do all the hard work so she can come in at the end as the grieving widow. My older son thinks I should let her come, and I told her to mind his own business and mouth. I'm not going to sugarcoat your mom for you. Your mom is a witch and will be treated the same way that she treated your stepdad. Maybe shouldn't have said that, you know, to the kids. But uh, but wow, this is this is uh, this is screwed up. Uh, River Lovegood, sickness and health, people. There is an and in there. Agreed. I can't imagine man being like, oh, uh, oh, you're gonna get really sick and you're gonna have a lot of medical bills. Yeah, I'm out. That doesn't sound fun. And then be like, I really want to come to the memorial. I think you lose that right. You lose that right whenever you abandon somebody. You can you can remember them in your own way, but you you abandon them. You don't get to swoop in at the end and be like, "I'm so sad. I'm so we had such a great time together. You remember all the good times?" Well, that's all you remember because you bailed out for the hard part. Good gravy. So the question here was, "Am I the ask not for banning my son's mom from a memorial?" No, hell no. I mean, I don't know, because maybe, maybe Christopher, the ex who ended up passing, I mean, as the executor, he's making decisions on his, his behalf here, or as his power of attorney, he's making decisions on his behalf. He's the controller of everything there. Um, You know, I don't know that Christopher spoke badly about his, about Diana. I don't know that he, he said, don't allow her there or anything. This was a decision that OP made, but it was made um, out of respect for Christopher and out of disgust for what his ex-wife had done to him. And I get it Like you don't get to be there. You don't deserve to be there. If you check out when it gets rough, when times get hard, you run, you don't get to be there. NTA, NTA and, and her obviously abandoning him as soon as things got difficult because she didn't want the medical bills and she didn't want to be his nurse is that as a plain as day ask on one move. Holy crap. Candy Thunder. God forbid anything ever puts you in a position where you have to go through something like that. I am there. I'm not saying I'm looking forward to it. I hope that it never happens. But I can't imagine being with someone who would leave you at the drop of a hat when you got a diagnosis. That's not love. That's a, that's the memes. She's got the memes. She just wanted somebody to have fun with. She didn't want to do like hard stuff, you know the boys being there the only part that i don't like about this is is if op said to to the older son who is 16 your mom's a witch and will be treated the same way she treated your stepdad i don't i don't think that's your place to make that call um i think you know being completely transparent and clinical about it and being like this is why i'm saying no uh, but but there was an opinion expressed in there and i think when the uh, opinion was injected into that sentence it's something you probably shouldn't have done in my opinion, I still don't think you're the asshole for this situation. And the question was, am I the astronaut for banning my son's mom from a memorial? And for that, I still say no. Maybe if he had still said it, but clarified at the end, that's my opinion. It's clearly his opinion. But I think when it comes to kids, uh, like you plant a seed, you know what I mean? I think I think parents plant seeds whenever they say things about the other parents. And unless they are perfectly clear that this is their personal opinion and not them trying to, to shape 
their child's opinion in any way, shape or form. I, I, I just don't like it. It's a game. It's a game that should not be played, in my opinion. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder once again with another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Askinaut for telling my son he will pay back for the cheese and meat or he won't be eating Thanksgiving tomorrow? Did he eat all the cheese and meat that was supposed to be for Thanksgiving? It's not as bad as stealing the turkey, that's for sure. I'll keep this one short. Every year we have a charcuterie board, uh, or as I like to call them, a cooter board, before Thanksgiving meal at 6. Just something everyone can pick at so they aren't dying of hunger by dinner time. My son, 16, loves cheese, and due to this, I make sure to label when he can't eat something. I labeled all the stuff for Thanksgiving, don't eat. Well, yesterday he went and ate all of the fancy meats and basically ate from each block that I bought. I truly was pissed since I work extra hours to pay for it since the prices are awful now for a nice cheese. I told him he needs to go to the store to replace all of it, which would cost him around $70. One of the cheeses he ate was $18, or he doesn't get to eat Thanksgiving meal. This boy doesn't just like cheese. He likes bougie cheese. He is refusing to pay it back. So no Thanksgiving meal. He will eat a sandwich and he thinks I'm being a horrible jerk. My husband is on his side and doesn't understand why I'm so pissed about it. Oof. Oof. Okay. Edit. Thank you. I made up my mind. I already informed my mother-in-law of the situation and she offered to bring a nice cheese board if he still refuses. I'm giving him one last chance. He can buy it, not get Thanksgiving tomorrow, or work for 11 hours to make up the money. I liked that idea from a Redditor, and I have a feeling he won't do either of the options given, so probably no Thanksgiving and my relatives will understand. Note for everyone wondering, Opie mentioned in comments that there was plenty of other food for her son to choose from, but he chose food that was labeled do not eat. Top comment from Reddit, having to work extra hours to be able to afford it, planning everything out and clearly labeling the food. It wasn't just a hungry teen. It was completely selfish. Making him pay to replace the food would be the start of the consequences, in my opinion. How old is he? 16. 16 year old kid. He knows better. He knows better. And either if he has money saved up that he can, if he has the means to be able to pay for this, he needs to pay for this. If he doesn't, then he needs to work for it. That's all there is to it. Um, I don't think not eating the meal would be an option, at least not for me. I wouldn't make it one of the options because it's too easy. It's too easy of an out. There needs to be some pain created here and just not having Thanksgiving with everybody else. Is, it doesn't feel like enough. It's too easy. There needs to be some manual labor pain, or I have to take money from the little bit that I have saved that I was going to buy this, this game with or whatever, take a girl on a date with whatever there needs to be some kind of pain felt there that is beyond just eating something different if he was older i think not having thanksgiving would probably mean more but in this case like he's just but he knew everything was labeled there was uh there were plenty of barriers set here and he just broke them all down and gave zero shits um and is refusing so yeah that sucks um and that was some bougie cheese he's got to replace it and again, I think as a parent, you have to look at this, you have to look at this and think, okay, I need to teach my child what happens in this kind of situation, because if he goes out in the world and does this kind of thing to someone else, how, how are they going to react? He's going to have to pay to replace it. He stole it. I mean, you're his mom. It's in his house, but it was clearly labeled. Do not do this. And he did it anyway. So your hubby here, let me go back here. My husband is on his side and doesn't understand why I'm so pissed about it. That sucks. He'll, I'll be here. If he openly opposed you in front of the son, it's even worse because now there's division and he's going to play the dad, right? And, and I strongly believe in a united front, especially in front of the kids. If you guys disagree about something, do it behind a closed door, present a united front. Uh, but but him not being on your side here, not understanding it, I don't think is so much about not understanding it. It's about... Um, it's about not wanting to deal with the son, either bitching about his consequences or having consequences. I don't think it's him not understanding why you're mad. I really don't. I really don't. I think your husband is an asshole for this, too. You for telling your son he will pay back for the cheese and meat or he won't be eating Thanksgiving tomorrow. NTA. NTA. And I would agree it's the beginning of the consequences. 
yeah, of course. If if this is something that kid learned from dad, then of course dad isn't upset. Another theory, maybe kid and dad ate it together. So dad's minimizing here. Maybe dad took part in this. Or maybe dad said it was okay. He could be an accomplice here. Suck. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. And this one is titled, Will I be the astronaut if I asked my in-laws to return my children's toys? Originally posted November 19th, 2023. There's an update. Hey, yo. My children take very good care of their toys and possessions. As it's nearing Christmas, they have chosen old toys to donate, to keep, and some that they weren't quite ready to get rid of yet. Got it that time. Yes. My in-laws don't have many toys at their home and have said that they needed to get more for their toy closet for all the grandkids. My eldest suggested that they bring the toys to their grandparents for the toy closet. This way they could still play with them and see them when they wanted and bonus all their cousins could play with them too. My in-laws were excited and thanked them for donating to the toy closet. The first time we saw the kids cousins, they were excited to show them the toys that they all had fun playing with them together. Cut to a couple months later when we stopped over and they were all gone. My kids asked grandma and grandpa what happened and they weren't sure. They texted my sister-in-law and she said, sorry, they were really nice. My kids liked them. So we decided to bring them all home with us. This isn't the lost and found lady. This is the community toy closet. You give to it. You don't take from it. My mother-in-law asked if they were bringing them back for their toy closet. And she wrote back and simply said, no. (laughs) my kids are kind of hurt as they weren't ready to give them up yet and they wanted to be able to share and play at their grandparents house so one would i be the astronaut if i wrote and asked sister-in-law to please bring the kids community toys back for additional info my in-laws are afraid to anger sister-in-law because she is very easy to hold a grudge so this convo would fall on myself and or my husband who also feels the same way oh joy we all know that person he actually suggested we ask on here we might be the assholes if we do this let's ask reddit first also their kids have plenty of toys at home so it's not like they don't have anything to play with also there are multiple families who come to their home with kids not just our family and this particular brother-in-law's family my husband has four other siblings with kids relevant comments nta your kids put the toys for all the kids in the family to share not for other parents to treat as a free toy store it doesn't matter if your kids have a lot of toys and sister-in-law's kids have no toys at all if sister-in-law wants free toys she has to ask for free toys not steal them from the shared toy closet at grandparents house this level of entitlement is nasty comment did your in-laws tell your sister-in-law she can't keep them My response would vary depending on that information. If your in-laws never told your sister-in-law no, then this is when you explain to your kids that once you give someone something, they can re-gift it. Gifts are things we let go of, and donations to places means they belong to the place. It sucks and it hurts, but now we know we can't leave things at grandma and grandpa's, and anything we give to grandma and grandpa may be things they re-gift. If your in-laws did tell your sister-in-law no, then you are in the clear because your sister-in-law stole things and then refused to return them. Hold up. Before I even read original OP's reply here, this comment makes an assumption that grandma and grandpa gifted these things to her. Taking something from someone without them saying, give it back is not gifting. That does not a gift make. If you, if you take my cup and I don't say, give it back, you still took my cup. It's not a gift. You'd be like, oh, we didn't say give it back. It's a gift. That's that's not how gifting works in this world. Oh, get the Johnny Rose on that one. Oh, original OP's reply. My in-laws didn't tell her that she could take them. They didn't even know that they were gone as much as she must have snuck them out of their house. <sighs> Brought the big bag. They asked if she took them, then asked if she was bringing them back. She said no, and they are afraid to anger her by asking for them back. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Man, I just imagine, you know, sometimes I just imagine we have an update, but I imagine what it would be like to be one of those people that just throws a big bitch fit about everything. So no one, so people let them get away with anything. Can you imagine being one of these people? 
that they're like, oh, it's not, it's just not worth the hassle to oppose it because, because it's going to be a scene. She's going to get pissed. She's going to hold a grudge for seven years. I, I just can't imagine there are perks to being that kind of person. Maybe I'm doing life wrong. Maybe it's easier that way. You get your way, obviously. I mean, surely the whole world doesn't cater to her like that, right? Update November 21st, 2023, two days after the original post. I have to say that I was surprised at the number of people who said I was not the asshole. It really made us feel better, and thank you guys for giving us advice on what to do next. We spoke to my mother and father-in-law, and my husband told them he didn't like that they were too afraid to say anything. Mother-in-law said that she was afraid since my sister-in-law is very quick to go no contact with people. She seems to get sick of people in her life easily and cuts them out when she gets offended. Mother-in-law is afraid to not see her grandchildren. Oh, yeah. Now I get it. I get the fear, but it's still not right. I asked them if they at all offered, even inadvertently, for her kids to take the toys we left. They said, definitely not. I believe them. See, not a gift. My husband called my brother-in-law and said, thanks to those who suggested this, hey, we were just over at mom and dad's and there seems to have been some confusion. Our kiddos left some toys to store there for all the grandkids to share and I think your wife thought we wanted to get rid of them. Total miscommunication. Sorry about that. We're headed to the area and can swing by now to grab them. Brother-in-law said that was fine and he didn't even know they had them. So we swung by, he found them and helped us pack them all in the trunk. Sister-in-law was getting ready and came out as we were packing up. Her face got red and she turned around and went back in the house. We stood out for a while talking to brother-in-law until he checked his phone. He said he had to get inside and he went in to talk with his wife. We could hear through the walls that she was yelling and crying. After 10 minutes of extremely awkward looks between my husband and I, we texted him that we were going to head out and he came back out looking upset. He said his wife was crying inside and that she kept trying to go back and forth with why she had the toys and he was confused. We just played dumb and said that our kids couldn't find the toys we left when we went back and were told that you guys had possibly accidentally taken them. He said he was sorry and we said our goodbyes and left. They got the toys. They got the toys. Victory. Sister-in-law has since been posting about how family isn't blood and how she doesn't know who to trust anymore. I'm sure it will blow over one day. I just don't know who to trust anymore. The people that I'm blood related to make me give the things back that I steal. I don't know who to trust. We also spoke with our children about how kind they were to want to share with their cousins that we are a kind and giving family, but that doesn't mean that we let people take advantage of our kindness. We understood that these were given to stay at grandma and grandpa's and how upsetting it was that they weren't there, but that it was maybe a misunderstanding and mom and dad got them back now. I think they're too young now, but one day they will realize how their aunt is. Thank you all for suggesting that we stand up for our kids. My husband and I thank you for all the advice. Hope y'all have a good holiday. Hell yeah. This is fantastic. Uh, yeah. And you know what? I feel like a terrible person because I didn't even think about how parents needed to stand up for their kids in this instance, because it was something that was taken from them. It wasn't just something that they gave for just other kids to play with. It's something they weren't ready to part with yet. And now they had been, they felt harm from this. So they had to stand up for their kids. This was such a delicate situation that they handled so masterfully. I, I, I could not have done this better if I spent a year planning it. Seriously, freaking bravo. That is amazing. And yeah, teaching the kids what they taught them as a rapper on this whole scenario uh, and teaching them that we don't let people take advantage of our kindness is so, so well done. Damn. Nice job. <laughs> I just don't know who to trust anymore. <sighs> People are making me return things that I stole. <sighs> Even my own husband, he facilitated it. He's in the doghouse now. He just let him take it. Hell, he even bagged them up for him. Here, Johnny, why don't you just give him the keys to our stolen cars too? My God. You going to tell him about the frying pan that I took from their house two years ago? Whose team are you on? The nerve. Hey 
there, it's Dusty Thunder with yet another Reddit story for you. This one is titled, Am I the Askinaut for not changing my dog's name when my new neighbor's child had the same name? <laughs> ah, I could see the complication, right? You're leaning out the door, you're like, Jimmy! Jimmy! Neighbor's kid's like, dude, what? I, 36 male, am the owner of a great Pyrenees Australian cattle dog mix named Charlotte, 6 female. I live in a lower middle class suburb in an unspecified United State. I have lived here for about a year now, and I let Charlotte out to go potty roughly six or so times a day. It's always the same routine. I open the back door, Charlotte runs out to pee and patrol the yard. Apparently, it's a Pyrenees thing. And doesn't typically come bounding back to the door until I poke my head out and call her name. About a week or two ago, maybe longer if I didn't notice, new neighbors moved in across my back alley. I had no intentions of interacting with them whatsoever, like ever, except today when I was executing the last step of Charlotte's aforementioned potty protocol. I stuck my head out and called her name, but this time, alongside the familiar sounds of my dog galloping up to the porch steps, was an adult, human, voice shouting something along the lines of, Why are you calling my daughter? At first, I thought I might just be my new neighbors getting into a spat until a couple minutes later, I heard pounding on my front door. I opened the door to an angry man about twice my size glaring me down. He said something like, why the F are you calling my daughter into your house? And I responded, your daughter's name is Charlotte? And he said, <laughs> and he just kept glaring at me. In absence of a response, I followed up with, Charlotte's my dog's name, dude. And he rolled his eyes at me and said, I better change my dog's name because he doesn't want his daughter too female getting confused and running into my house. I told him that's not going to happen because not only did my dog have the name first, we also lived here first. Plus, I don't like strangers making demands of me before even attempting to be polite. What I didn't say but really wanted to is that teaching his child stranger danger is his responsibility, not mine. Touche. He called me stupid and said that a human child obviously has priority over a dog for a name. I shut the door in his face and stared at him through the peephole for a moment before he eventually walked back to his house. This last potty break, I went out with Charlotte and stayed in the yard with her until she finished her business. But this guy just kind of stood in his yard with his arms crossed and glared at me the entire time. So the question here is, am I the astronaut for not changing my dog's name when my new neighbor's child had the same name? No, you are not the astronaut for not changing your dog's name. What if you had a kid named Charlotte? Would you be marching over there saying, my kid has that name. You need to change your kid's name. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you wanted to be extra polite, you could start using a nickname or a different call mechanism or something like that. You could start doing something different, but you have no reason to be polite because they weren't. He showed up, made demands of you, and tried to bully you into changing your freaking dog's name. Not going to happen. My concern now, my concern now is that one way for him to end this feud is to get rid of your dog. So now you've got to keep a close eye on your dog because he obviously has unrestricted, at least view access of when your dog is out there. Uh, I would be concerned that he at some point does something to your animal, thereby removing the confusion. That's the first thing I thought of. I'm like, um, this seems like the kind of asshole who's going to do something like that. It is his responsibility to teach her stranger danger, not yours. And you may end up having to say that. Also, you're going to have to get a nest cam or something like that in the, in the backyard. If you don't have one already, you're going to have to get some security footage, probably on your front and back entrance here, which sucks. I get it, but it's probably a good idea to have anyway. But now you've got a, um, a higher likelihood of some bullshit going down. So you have to. It's not really a question of if something's going to happen at this point. It's a question of what and when, unfortunately. Why would his two-year-old be outside by herself? Maybe he's thinking ahead. Maybe he's like, you know, in years to come. But also, how about we just tell the kid that doggy's name has the same name as yours. So when, when the neighbor says Charlotte, they're talking to their dog, not to you, okay? Good gravy. Not the asshole at all. This is their responsibility. The fact that he came up and just and just demanded it of you and threatened you like you're just going to change your animal's name. Yes. Let me let me undo um, six years worth of training because it inconveniences you somehow like you might actually have to do some work. Sorry. What is this logic you speak of? <laughs> I don't know. I heard about it once. I heard, I heard about it once.